What's up guys? This is a breakdown of the system Gordon Ryan follows to finish from the back. We're going to go through about four different matches where he uses the same system to finish. If you guys like the content and you want to support the channel, a like and subscribe would mean a lot right now and help the channel grow. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The system's going to start with a seatbelt. Anytime something feels off or we don't like what's happening, we should always take a couple steps back, re-secure the seatbelt and go from there. Generally on the back, you're glued to your seatbelt. You're squeezing as tight as you can, your chin's on the shoulder, and most of your control comes from there. But we'll see Gordon uses this body triangle to free his hands up a little bit and attack both sides. This is where we start to see Gordon's unique system come into play. Now, instead of attacking the arm that's inside his seatbelt, he's going to go for the arm that's outside first. So he's baiting Galvao to hand fight. When Galvao brings his left hand up to try to defend the choke, Gordon's going to reach his right arm under the armpit and grab that left hand to trap it. This grip on the hand makes it really easy for him to feed the hand down and secure it with his legs. Once that left arm's secure, we see him switch to this sort of straight jacket control. So this does a couple things. It helps to feed that arm across to your other hand, and it also takes away a lot of your opponent's strength, right? You can think of it like holding an alligator's mouth shut. They're going to be strong biting down, but not so strong opening up. In general, we see Gordon hit this position and finish pretty quick. The fact that Galvao lasts so long with just one arm is a real testament to his toughness. We'll see one attempt at that Marcelo style one arm choke, but then we're gonna have a lot of hand fighting here. So we'll fast forward through just to kind of get back to where we were in the match. But I wanna be clear, hand fighting is really valuable. There's a lot to learn there. It's just not the focus of this video. At this point, the system set up how Gordon wants it, right? He just needs to find a way to get under Galvao's chin. So this is just a little battle that's happening here. It's gonna be a lot of repeated things where Gordon's holding the hand down, trying to get it out of his way while he uses his forearm to grind under the chin. So now we see the beginning of the end. Gordon's holding that hand down, walking his forearm across the chin. He's under the chin at this point. He just needs to get that forearm deeper so he knows that he can get that bicep control. And Gordon usually has two finishes from here. He has the one where he just holds your arm down and one arm chokes you Marcelo style. And then he has this one where he switches to the bicep control, almost like a traditional rear naked choke. Going into our second match, we'll see the same concept we already talked about. Gordon's going to start with the seatbelt grip. We'll see a little bit of hand fighting, but he's going to attack the arm that's outside the seatbelt first, right? We see him grab with his right arm under the armpit to the left arm, and now he feeds it to his leg. Now that that arm's out of the picture, we're hand fighting two versus one, so this is a much easier battle to win, right? Gordon's going to be a little more straightforward this time, and we'll see him go straight for the arm trap and then straight to the rear naked choke. And I think the times that we see him do that Marcelo style where he holds the arm down and chokes with one arm, it's almost just because he can, right? I think it's almost always more efficient to switch to that bicep control and squeeze with both arms. Once the choke's locked in like this too, I don't think that free hand really matters. It's almost impossible to hand fight out of this with one arm. Hopefully going into this third match, you're starting to see the pattern now, right? We start with the seatbelt. He's going to attack the arm that's outside the seatbelt first, feed it down into his legs, and then he's going to immediately trap the arm that's inside. Now Gordon's free to hand fight two versus one. And again, it's just getting that arm out of your way enough to get far enough under his chin that you can connect to your bicep and finish. And that's what we see here. Just to avoid being too repetitive, I'm only going to show one more match where his opponent knows and understands the system he's following. Gary's a former teammate, so he understands the system and we see him do a pretty good job of undoing some of the early steps. Gordon switches to this double under control. What he's doing here is trying to get access to that straight jacket control we talked about on both sides, right? He can reach under either side arm and grab that cross arm to set it up. To defend this position, you have to understand the offensive side. A lot of Gordon's grips come off of baits, where he's threatening a choke, getting you to bring your hand up. That's where he's grabbing your hand. He's threatening a grip, getting you to defend, and then he's switching the grip to the other hand. So you have to really understand what he's going for in order to get out of it. Pay attention to the way Gary's hand fighting, because he's focused on the early layers of the system, right? He's focused on that initial grip, the seatbelt, undoing those early parts is going to save you so much effort later on. And you can apply that to most areas of jiu-jitsu, but I think it's really easy to forget about these layers when we're in these super dominant positions. Sometimes it can seem like when you're on someone's back, all you need to do is grab their neck and choke them, but there's a system to every position. Gordon finishes his matches so often, it's easy to look past a lot of his control, but he's able to maintain these positions almost as long as he wants. So we see him spam a lot of these systems that we talked about until his opponent just slips up and misses one of those windows. Eventually, we get back to the system we've been talking about. So to recap, Gordon starts with the seatbelt. He's going to grip that arm that's outside the seatbelt and start to feed it down towards his legs. Once that arm's secure in the legs, the focus can shift to the other hand. Gordon can now fight this free hand with two arms and pin it down. Once that arm's pinned, you can usually just hold it down with one arm, and then you have a free hand to work on the chin. Out of all the matches we went through, this is the only one we see Gordon use that one-arm Marcelo-style choke. Against a bigger, stronger opponent, he may have to let go of that arm trap so that he can reach his left arm all the way across to the bicep. But if the opponent's a little smaller, sometimes you can get away with just holding that arm down and doing the one arm choke. I think for the vast majority of people that aren't as strong as Gordon, it's going to be more beneficial to just do a regular rear naked choke and deal with whatever hand fighting they're going to do with that free hand. 
Gary turning to the right here is just as much damage control as he can do. Gordon has his right arm pinned, so he's not going to be able to turn left, so he's kind of forced to turn this way to try to get as much air as he can. I think with getting under the chin, consistency is key. You want them to feel like every time they move their chin a little bit, your hand sinks closer and closer and closer. Now that he's under the chin, this is where he has that choice to make. Does he keep that arm trapped and try to choke with one arm, or does he let it go and try to switch to his bicep for a traditional rear naked choke? My take there is that the rear naked choke is stronger squeeze-wise, but anytime you have to let something go and switch position, you're opening up a big risk that your opponent moves. So if you are stronger than your opponent, it might be a good option. If not, I think it's better to switch to the rear naked choke. You can see he gets to a point where he's not even really holding that arm trap anymore. He's just kind of blocking and squeezing with the one arm to finish. But like I said, I think a bigger opponent it might look a little different. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Remember, a like and subscribe helps a lot while we're trying to grow the channel. I'm going to try to put out as much content as I can. I'm still learning how to edit, and I want to make the best videos that I can. So as soon as the videos are done and I feel like they're exactly how I want them to be, I'm going to put them out. But thank you guys for watching.